Okay, so if we look at this um, next problem, we see that our equation says f of x, which remember is the same as y equals, right, it's just function notation, y equals 2x squared plus 4x plus 3. So from last time, I just put in the answers, you already have these um, from your notes from last time. And if you forget, you can go back to watch the videos from last time to figure out how to find the y-intercept, how to find the axis of symmetry, how to find the vertex. So the y-intercept was 0 comma c. If you plug in 0 for x, you get out 3, which is c. So we have 0, 3, which is the green dot right here. That's the y-intercept on the y-axis. Now to find the axis of symmetry, it's negative b over 2a. So if b is positive 4 and what am I doing? If b is positive 4, then we have um, negative positive 4 over 2 times if a is 2. We have negative 4 over 4, which is negative 1. So it's x equals negative 1. Then it says the x coordinate of the vertex, right? Vertex is that ordered pair where it's going to change direction. The x coordinate is the same as the axis of symmetry. So I just filled in right away negative 1. And then the y coordinate, it says plug the x value from step 3. So plug this that x value negative 1 into the original equation. So I need to plug in negative 1 in for x, wherever I'm plugging in x. Negative, negative, negative. Where does it plug? Okay, so then we get negative 1 squared is positive 1. It's positive. And 1 times 2 is 2. And 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 plus 3. Move from left to right, so 2 minus 4 was negative 2, negative 2 plus 3 was 1. So this is the vertex, right? Right in here. Now, we had all that information last time. So now that you have the vertex, you have you want to put it in the center of your table, and you want minimally to have two ordered pairs on either side so that you can see the shape of the graph. So on the left and on the right of an x value of negative 1, okay? So let's say we choose to plug in negative 2, and let's say we choose to plug in negative 3. And let's say on the right, we choose to plug in 0 and 1. Now it's nice if they're equidistant. Remember, negative 2 is one unit to the left. 0 is one unit on the number line away from negative 1. Negative 3 is two units, right? Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. That's two units from negative 1 on the left, and 1 is two units on the right. Right, if you're walking on the number line. Because when you do that, your y values, if they're the same distance away, are going to be the same. So sometimes it'll save you a little bit of time if you recognize that. If not, it's okay. You can just plug in any random ordered pairs. But that only happens if they're equidistant, if they're the same. Okay, and like I said in the last video, you can also go and plug this into your graphing calculator and look at the table. Just make sure that negative 1, 1 is in the center of your table before you pick ordered pairs, before you scroll up or down to find ordered pairs on either side. So let's say we plug in negative 2. If we plug in negative 2, then into our equation, we would have y equals, right, y equals 2 parentheses, negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 plus 3. So then you have to do exponent first, right? Anything in parentheses squared is going to become positive. So we have positive 4, negative 2 squared is positive 4. And then we're going to always multiply by number in front. Okay, I'm still looking at that idea, so I'll, I'll do it first. I'm making a video for my class. Okay, so then we multiply 2 times 4, we get 8. And then 4 times negative 2 is minus 8 plus 3. So then when we go, we get 8 minus 8 is, 8 minus 8 is uh, 0, and then so those cancel, and then we get 3 as our output. If we plug in 0, like before, um, 
everything cancels, right? Because 0 squared is 0 times 2 is 0 plus 4 times 0 would cancel, so we get 3. That's the, the y-intercept, which we actually already have. Notice again that negative 2 and 0 are the same amount of distance away from the center, that x value of negative 1, so their y's are the same. That saves you a little time if you can recognize that. Okay, if we go up and we plug in negative 3. So if we plug in negative 3, we'll get y equals 2 times negative 3 squared. James, I'll come get you when I'm done in a few minutes, okay? Plus 4 in a few minutes, James. So notice I'm plugging negative 3 in where I see x. So negative 3 squared is 9. So 9. James, can you go in there and shut the door? Bless you. So we have 9 times 2 is 18. And I already multiplied 4 times negative 3, so that was negative 12. Plus 3. 8 minus 12 is 6. We move from left to right. Order of operations. Plus 3. So we get 9. So negative 3, we get positive 9. And then down here, if we plug in 1, we would get y equals 2 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative some positive 1 and positive 1 times positive 1 3. So we get positive 1 squared is 1, so then we're getting 2 times 1, then plus 4 times 1, remember never just punch all this into your calculator right away because it doesn't do order of operation for you, so 2 plus 4, right, 2 times 1 is 2, 4 times 1 is 4, so 2 plus 4 is 6, and 6 plus 3 will get us 9. Notice those also are the same value because negative 3 and 1 are both 2 units away from negative 1. So now I'm going to plot those. So we have negative 2 to the left, 2 units, up 3, right in there. And then we have negative 3 to the left, 3, up 9. So it's going to be somewhere up here, right? You know, it's off our chart. If you want to scale this differently, like 2, 4, 6, you can. And then we have 1, 0, 3, to the, that's 0, up 3, that's the y intercept, and 1, 9. 1, 9 is also up here somewhere. Okay, so then we go in and we make sure when we draw our sketch that we make a nice U shape, not V shape. And obviously the more ordered pairs we have, the nicer our graph will look. And we do arrows because it's going to continue. Okay, notice it's a U shape. And notice it's pointing up because our A value is positive. We talked about that two classes ago. Our A value is positive, so point it up. And even though it might not look like it because you don't have the parent um, parent function on you know on this same graph paper. Because this a value, the absolute value of 2, is greater than 1, it's actually going to be narrower than the parent function. So it makes sense. It's pointing up, and it looks a little narrower than the parent function. Oh, let me plug in the vertex. Because it says what's the vertex. Which, again, if you looked at the notes from last time, you would already have that value. Okay, so you can just write that value down to save some time. But when you're doing your homework, show work how you're plugging in the other ordered pairs. If you don't have graph paper, you can just draw a rough sketch on your sheet of paper.
Okay, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to make another video. So I'm going to make another video for example two and another for example three. So there's going to be one, two, three, there's four videos.